Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And today's tutorial will be guiding you on how to send emails with the XEdge IDE platform. In a previous video, we went over how to install the XEdge32 firmware on your ESP32-S3 to get started coding Lua applications on your device in just a matter of a few steps. And this tutorial will be building upon what we worked on in part one, which I will link here and in the description down below. And we'll instead be sending emails using the XEdge IDE through the UI. And we'll be following along their documentation, which once again will be linked down in the description below, which really incredibly simplifies the sending of emails, allowing us to send emails with attachments and inline images. And it's really easy to configure with the IDE. Best of all, it does encrypt your email and your credentials with the XEdge config file, as you could see here per their documentation. So we'll be walking you through that in just a matter of a few steps. So I do not want to waste any time, guys. Let's just jump into it and show you how easy it is to send emails with the XEdge IDE platform on your ESP32 S3. Okay, so first things first, we'll be using Gmail for today's video. If you are using Hotmail or Outlook, they have some other instructions here which you can follow along. Now, per their instructions, if we are setting up Gmail for the SMTP server, we have to configure something called an app password. Now, this is not XEdge32 specific. This is just a layer of security required through using Gmail for this application. So if we want to be able to do this, we just want to go to our Gmail account, which I already have open here. And we want to go to myaccount.google.com. And in the left panel, as you can see, we go to the security tab and we just want to go down make sure two-step verification is enabled. So we can just go ahead and select that. So I'm already in my two-step verification portal. And on the bottom, we could just go ahead and create an app password. Okay, so it's really simple. You can see I played around with it a matter of a few times and we could just call it whatever we want. So we'll call it Lua 3.0 because Lua is the programming language of XEdge32. And we can go ahead and create, make sure you keep this secure as possible because people can actually send emails using your account with this app password. So now that we have that done, we have all the parameters on the Gmail side of things to actually be able to use the SMTP server on XEdge32. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to go to our XEdge IDE. Now, if you follow along with part one, you should already have this and we can just go to that by going to xedge32.local, of course, making sure your device is plugged in with the firmware. And the instructions tell us to click the top right here and to enable SMTP server, which you could see is incredibly straightforward there. And we just have to put in a couple of parameters. So first, we just wanna put in our email address. Next, we just want to put in the server name. Now for Gmail, it's just smtp.gmail.com. For the port for Gmail, it's 465. If you are using another email provider such as Hotmail or Outlook, it will be different and that is in their documentation. Next, we just want to use the username and password. So we can just put our email for that, shilltech at gmail.com. And next, we just want to put the password. So this is actually the app password we got from part one in this tutorial today where we went and got the app password from Gmail. So we could just go ahead and paste that in. Now, there are some connection security settings here. Per their documentation, if we go down, we want the connection security for Gmail to be TLS, so that is also correct. Finally, it looks like everything is done. We have some other parameters which we're not gonna play around with here, and we're just gonna go ahead and save this. So this initially sends a test email, so if you put everything properly, you should be able to go to your email, and successfully, we see a test email. So it looks like we set up our SMTP server successfully. Okay, so now that we set up our SMTP server, it's incredibly simple to send emails with the Lua programming language in XEdge32. So per their documentation, they have a little snippet here that allows us to test and send a simple text message. And of course, they have other documentation as well to send other HTML emails for more advanced applications where you could probably send images and that sort of thing. We'll just be going over example one here and we can literally just copy this snippet right here. Go back to our XEdge32 IDE and we could just open a Lua shell, go ahead and paste that in. And the two emails just gonna be another email I have just to test it on another email. So it'll be going from shillatech at gmail to this one. And we could just do that. And we're not going to change the subject in the body, but you can see how simple Lua is. Really readable programming language. And of course, the XEdge32 platform makes it incredibly easy to code using Lua. So now that we have this, we could just go ahead and run this example. So we could see that it did run. Now give that a moment, it should have sent the email to our Gmail account, so let's go there. We could see that it did that successfully. So we just saw how incredibly simple it was to set up email and be able to send email using the XEdge32 platform with the Lua programming language. 
That pretty much sums it up for today's video, everyone. I hope you got the gist of it and were able to send email with the SMTP server in the XEdge32 platform in the Lua programming language. Now, if you have any questions, I will refer you to the documentation, which I will link down in the description below. Also, feel free to ask me questions on the channel as well. As we saw, it was incredibly simple to do, and it even encrypted our email settings for us and credentials within the XEdge config file, which makes this applicable to serious applications that we can use in production for IoT and embedded systems. Let us know what you want to see in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.